today for another episode. Um, today's format is more of a Bible study, so we're going to go into prayer and then we're just going to look at some scriptures. I ask that you pause the video right now if you don't have your Bible open, and then you can um, start it again when you go get your Bible. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to pray. Lord, we just come to you with humble hearts. God, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. God, if we've committed any sins against you, Lord. God, I just ask that you will open our understanding as we go through the scriptures, God. Lord, I just pray, God, that you will, I just find confusion in the name of Jesus. And I just ask, God, that you will speak to us, God. Help us, Lord, not to lean to our own understanding or our own feelings, God. But help us, God, to just see what it is that you desire for us to see and learn, God, through this Bible study. God, not my will be done, but yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. So, um, first and foremost, I just want to say I know um, a lot of crazy things have been happening um, just throughout this past 365 days alone. And I just want to encourage you to let you know that God is with us and he loves us and nothing is a surprise to him. So we can rely on him. We don't have to be afraid about what's to come um, because he promised to never leave us nor forsake us. So I want to read. Um, today we're just going to be talking about love because this is a problem that we have as people. And this, this video is for anyone that will come to watch this video, but particu particularly the um, the church and our issue with love, um, loving our neighbor as ourselves, loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. So the thing that God just had me thinking about, no matter what's going on in the world, um, I always want to have the kingdom perspective. I always want to have the perspective that God wants me to have. Not only when it comes to things in the world, but even in my personal life, because we do have emotions, we have feelings, we're in this flesh, we're in this world, but we're not of the world. So as believers, our desire um, should always be to have a kingdom perspective. And we, we a lot of times, I can speak for myself, we need help with that. We need help from God um, to not lean to our own understanding. We need his Holy Spirit to, to, to teach us and guide us to all truth. And um, yeah, so let's go to the next scripture Luke, it's in Luke chapter 23. And this was the, the theme that God just had my mind set on as far as the center of this Bible study, which is loving like Christ. And we know that Jesus went through so much, but he said something very profound um, near the end of his life um, before he was crucified. Um, Luke 23 and 34. Well, let's go up a little bit. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in thee which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills cover us. For if they do these, for if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they would come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So just so we can just like meditate on that for a while. A lot of the things that we see in society, people tell you to repay evil for evil. People say, I'm going to hurt this person or do this because they hurt me or they hurt us. And um, that's not a biblical perspective. And it's not about not, it's so just because someone does something wrong and you forgive them, it doesn't mean that you're saying what they did was right. 
you know, clearly Jesus knew that these people weren't right and, you know, they and what they were doing to him, crucifying him and trying to find blame in him when they were just making this stuff up. But he still said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And as believers, you know, we have to do the same thing. And it's, it may not be easy. We can't do it on our own, um, which is why we have to be born again of the spirit. So God can lead and guide us and teach us how to do these things, how to overcome our feelings, how to overcome emotions that are not Christ like. Um, as far as, well, I'm not gonna say emotions, but the actions that are a result of our emotions. So, um, yeah, that's what I just wanted to kind of like, for all of us, this is for me too, because I have emotions. I don't always respond in the God, in the most godly way. And I have to ask for forgiveness and ask God to help me to, to be better, to be like Christ. And that's, that's what our, um, goal is as believers. We can't expect the world to, to adopt these same ways, but for, in order for people to, to be won over to Christ, we have to lead by example. Now let's go to 1 John 4 and 20. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And just think about that. That, it, that scripture is really deep because, um, like I said, in the society that we live in, we're taught to you know if someone does something to you then it's okay to to do it back to them because they were they were the perpetrator but that's not that's not the case and this is the number one thing that i feel in my heart when it comes to forgiveness and loving others is how can i you know i made so many mistakes but god forgives me he loves me so how can i choose not to want to forgive somebody or love someone because of what they've done you know, I think there's a scripture somewhere in Matthew that talks about like if you forgive others, you know, you'll be forgiven. And I'm paraphrasing. But if you don't forgive others, then that same judgment is going to, you know, rest on you. So that's just something to think about. Sometimes we just and it's a heart thing. The Bible says that the pure in heart will see God. And there may be some some things in our heart that we have to allow God to fix. But we have to be honest about it. If I don't like a particular person for whatever reason and I don't have love in my heart towards that individual, then I need to ask, I need to go to God. I don't need to act like that doesn't exist. So let's look at 1 Peter 4 and 8. And above all things have vervent charity or love among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That's deep. John 15 and 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And there's a, um, there's a scripture um this man i can't remember what his title was or who he was right off right now but basically he was talking to jesus about like um, the greatest commandment or maybe it was a group of people they were talking to him about the greatest commandment um and what we should do you know loving god with all of our heart and love loving our neighbors as ourselves you know i don't want to see anybody um the bible says that it's not god will that any should perish you know i don't want to see anybody perish we have to preach the truth but um and it's love to tell the truth some people uh, misunderstand that, but it's definitely love to tell the truth because we don't want to believe lies. Matthew 22. So this story is um, about maybe, okay, we won't do Matthew 22 because I can't remember. I, I didn't have it marked off. But Matthew 19, 16 through 24. So this is the, the young rich ruler. This, 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 to me, this scripture really speaks volume about our heart. So this is the young rich ruler. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So one thing that God allowed me to see, because I've studied this before, um, this, this ruler, or um, yeah, this young rich ruler, he tried to come to Jesus to appeal to like the power that he knew Jesus had. So like, if I know you have power, I can use you to get what I want. But Jesus was letting him know that it is that's that's not even the beginning. He said unto him, which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, 
and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now, looking at this scripture, some people may say, well, is Jesus saying that we're not supposed to have anything? Are we supposed to like sell everything? No, Jesus knew. So he knew, he already knew that this guy's weakness, the thing in his heart was that he had, he, he, he was, he was um, so confident in his possessions. So that was his personal thing. And Jesus, that Jesus was using it to show him that you're saying that you've done all these other things, but you have one problem. So this was this guy's personal problem um, that Jesus was like correcting him about. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had, I'm sorry, for he had great possession. So that was in his heart. His heart was puffed up on his possessions. That was his concern. And Jesus knew that. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. But then when you go on to read, I think through verse 27, um, he lets them know, because the disciples were like, well, who can be saved? You know, he's not saying that you can't be rich and go into heaven, but he's just saying that it's hard because it's a heart thing. Um, like this guy, he, he became so dependent on his possessions that he wasn't willing, willing to follow Christ for those things. And, um, yeah, and that may look different. Your, your thing may not be, your thing may be food. It may not be possessions like it was for this guy. So I just hope that today we all just have a better understanding of love. Definitely go back through these scriptures. And, um, well, the thing as far as the, the rich ruler is just like having our mindset on kingdom things, not the things of this world, not how, not how the world would want us to respond, but how God would want us to respond, respond to every situation. The Bible says, pray without ceasing to follow peace with all men, if we can. And I will be honest, you know, we, we can do it. We can do all things through Christ, but we have to make that decision. And it's not always, it's not easy to follow, um, to just like put your feelings to the side sometimes because we, we are in this flesh, we are in this world, but that's when we have to rely on Christ. That's why the Bible says that few find the narrow path because it's not always easy decisions that we'll have to make. It comes with a sacrifice. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. I know we haven't been together in a while, but I love you and I appreciate you. And thank you so much for your prayers. And until next time, keep the faith.